In my test, I put some potassium chlorine. As a solid, potassium chlorine contains no energy. But once heated, it contains a lot of energy. So let me heat it up. As we can see, the molecules in the potassium chlorine are starting to move rapidly, producing a gas that we can see coming out of the tip of the test tube. Now if I suddenly add some sugar into my test tube, we can see that there's potential to have exothermic energy. So that exothermic reaction that we see in the form of light is really hot to touch. Take my word for it. Let's look over here at my Erlenmeyer flask. I've also put some potassium chlorate in here. I heated this up so I could melt it. So you're saying this one's supposed to be cold and this one's supposed to be hot? I don't believe you. Wait, you don't believe that's cold? Not really, no. <laughs> yeah, it is cold. So... <laughs> so this is supposed to be exothermic? Not very hot. No, you need to turn. For this one to be exothermic, you need to do that. <laughs> uh, this one is exothermic when you do this. This one is exothermic when you do this. It's supposed to be lighting. So if I put my hand here, it should be hot. And what what happened? Should 
be hard. So, when I put my hand here, it should be hot. Aye! It actually is hot this time. Okay, good. Well, now that my potassium chlorate has dissolved and started to bubble, I'm going to throw some sugar in. Let's see what happens. As we can see, it's exothermic. Very exothermic. So today we've learned about exothermic reactions, which are really hot, and those are my favorites because we can produce fire with those. And we also learned about endothermic reactions, which are really cold, not necessarily my favorite ones. Really? Because I think we kind of like them. Really? Why is that? 